So today's topic of discussion is going to be safe women PED cycles. I think that there is a fundamental baseline that you can look at before you go even to looking to anabolic steroids as a fundamental piece. And how do we look at this? We're going to look at basically blood levels, where you are at, and where you can go before you even push limitations and thresholds to potential virilization. Now, virilization is a terminology of women getting masculinized, whether it's a deeper voice or enlargement of the clitoris, facial hair, whatever it may be. Some of these symptoms are irreversible if the damage goes on too long. Some of them are just permanent. Now, I, that's the main reason why I want to talk about this video and the way that you can look at it and to do it in a safer manner and stacking things together. There are different pathways that you can go down and utilize to optimize performance before having to hop to an anabolic steroid. Now, keep in mind that anabolic steroids do work. And I will talk about this as we get further into the video. So, let's start off with a fundamental piece. Testosterone is an amazing place to start. Now the issue is, is everyone converts differently. Some women and some people, period, men or males, men or females are going to aromatize more heavily. Aromatization is the process of converting that testosterone into estrogen. Some people are also going to convert them more into DHT. Now DHT is not bad for muscle building. I do want you to keep that in mind, but they do give you much unwanted side effects, hair loss, acne, hair growth, the list goes on, but those are the major unwanted side effects. So when we are looking at testosterone in a female, if, you, if a female is going on testosterone replacement therapy in the US, they're going to be looking at right around 7.5 milligrams. But keep in mind, even at that dose, depending on how you are converting that and where your testosterone and nanograms per deciliter is going to in blood work, you might go sky high at that number and you may, or you may not go high at all. Now a good realistic, actually safe number to start off at is actually three milligrams. And when I say that, you're like, what, three milligrams, not 30? Well, no, not 30, three milligrams. And what happens is you can titrate up from there, meaning increasing your dosages to see where your threshold is before you get negative side effects. On top of that, you should also be getting blood work to see where are your actual numbers. You may be taking three milligrams of testosterone, and most people are, most women are probably gonna end up around like the between 30 to 50 nanogram per deciliter marker around there. And then at 7.5, some women get up to 100. I have seen women at 7.5 milligrams go to 350 plus testosterone, nanogram per deciliter. Luckily, these women did not get side effects, surprisingly, but it's still relatively too high in retrospect because that's very super physiological. Usually that threshold number that you really don't want to break is 100 nanogram per deciliter before you start to get unwanted side effects. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if a doctor sees you getting unwanted side effects and you are on hormone replacement therapy, they're gonna put you on something like spirolactone to hopefully knock those side effects. Well, the best thing to do instead of taking spirolactone is actually backing off that dose to figure out where that threshold is. But doctors usually don't do the hand holding technique, right? So that's just that. So three milligrams and titrate up from there, see when you're getting side effects. But before the side effects even happen, hopefully you're getting blood work. Now, another important thing about that blood work is with estrogen, estrogen is an amazing muscle builder. So if you're converting more heavily, as long as you're on the elevated side of the estrogen, that's perfect as long as you're not getting side effects. If you start to get side effects, there are natural ways to start knocking down that estrogen and to optimize that liver to hopefully help with that aromatization that's occurring. So there's also different pathways that you can use with estrogen to get it going down a better pathway so that you don't get unwanted side effects from there but every single person is bio-individual. That's a whole point to this video. All right, now let's take it a step further. If you're on testosterone replacement therapy, because your estrogen elevates, you need to be on progesterone. I don't care who you are, you need to be on progesterone. Why? It has to do with getting your body into the luteal phase so that you can shed your uterine walls. And it's actually illegal to prescribe someone testosterone without putting on progesterone. And I have seen hormone replacement clinics do this. That's why I am very hesitant when women go on testosterone replacement therapy and they're not put on progesterone because you will not shed your uterine walls. And then you can thicker and thicker and thicker. Next thing you know, potentially, I'm theoretically, you could potentially get cancer or need an ablation, whatever it may be, but it's not a good end result. 
Now you can get the body naturally back on track and try to start shedding those walls and that can correct it naturally. So I do just want to clarify on that topic because it is a very mis mixed, missed topic on this discussion. Now, let's take it one step further. Another way to get enhancement without having to take anabolic steroids. We can look at things like growth hormone. Growth hormone at one IU a day is phenomenal for women. Uh, it's one of the few drugs that you can be on year round, testosterone and growth hormone and not have negative side effects. Now, one thing I would recommend if you're starting to take growth hormone is to get genome tested to make sure that you do not have cancer and tumor genes. If you do, it can potentially replicate these cells and speeding up that process. So that's one very important thing. What else can you throw into the mix to optimize this process? Well, things that help with insulin, right? To prevent you from going insulin resistant and to keep you very insulin sensitive. It's one of the most missed topics of discussion that does not get talked about, especially in women. Some bodybuilders test their blood glucose and stuff like that. Most women do not. Most people do not, unless if you're a diabetic. But things that are amazing for blood glucose control, berberine, metformin, and I'm not recommending it, but you need to know what you're doing if you're think even thinking about it, is low dose of the insulin. Now, at the end of the day, these open up your IGF-1 pathways to make sure that you're optimizing the results from your growth hormone. So that's the reason why it is so synergistic together. Other things that are completely natural that you can implement and optimize performance are things like creatine monohydrate. It holds a mitochondrial L-carnitine synergistic together. That is something that can help to optimize this process. And those are like just a fundamental baseline of where you can go with things that you can pretty much run year round without having negative side effects. So once you figure out where your thresholds are at, good to go. All right, let's take it a step further. After you get to here, maybe you can look to implementing something like a Anavar, for instance. Now, I would recommend starting off at no more than five milligrams. Five milligrams for some people is perfectly fine. Another thing that you're going to have to take into account is even at five milligrams, you can have some negative side effects. And if you're keeping that testosterone in there as a baseline, it may be something that you actually want to reduce down, potentially even remove. It just depends on how you are. So that is a baseline level fundamental for enhancing in a safe manner. Now you're gonna hear some crazy dosages out there and I am trying to preach a good, safe way to do this. There are other ways to do this. There are other drugs that can potentially be used. I am not currently talking about SARMs in this video. We'll save that for another video. I've already done some videos on this so you know my personal intake on it. I do believe that with females, for the only one that could potentially get used is Austrian. And I'll save that for another time in discussion. And it's not as much as you guys think it is without getting those negative side effects because yes, SARMs have side effects, I promise you. Hope you guys found this video helpful. Questions, currents, comments, concerns, drop them below. I'll talk to y'all soon.